Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Don't you hate when you're trying to talk about something and then some random thought hits you and you have to start laughing? Yeah, anyway, that's what happened. Uh, this is part six of a six part series on Chilean Carmenere. Like all the wines in this series, this is a free sample and I have free reign to review it however I wish. Last, the last episode with, with my, you know, Palpatine Vader shirt. Anyway, yeah, I did them all in one, I did all six in one episode, or I'm sorry, in one session. During the day too, so I'm not like, oh my goodness, it's like four in the morning type of thing. It's, uh, it's 3, 7, it's 15, 17 in the afternoon, 3, 17. All right. Anyway, way back in episode 99 of the WWTV era, the current one that is, I did a detailed segment on Chilean wine. Nothing has really changed from that. So if you want to know more, then hit the link in that description. So hit the link in the description for that episode and watch the first seven minutes or so. And that episode's links also include a ton of resources if you want to check them out. Today's wine comes from what can be considered one of the top wineries in Chile, Viña Montes. Not saying the rest of this series wines are, wineries are slouches, but Montes is arguably the best known of the group that make the iconic Purple Angel. Unfortunately, that's not what I'm reviewing today. I'm not upset about this by any means, but Montes, if you want to send me some, uh, some Purple Angel... I'm down with that. Uh, I reviewed their Sauvignon Blanc last year. While the webpage was a bit light on the details, I was able to dig up a decent amount about its history. So if you want to get a more detailed background about them, hit up that link, hit up the link of that episode uh, below. The highlights are that Aurelio Montes and Douglas Murray founded a company called Discover Wine Limited in 1987. This would eventually become Vina Montes. The winery is now ran by six families, Montes, Garces Silva, Barros, Murray, Warachi, and uh, Vidor. I don't know how to pronounce that last one, but I put, the, I put it up there so you can see what it looks like. They make a wide range of wines from value, I would call, to icon, all right? So um, yeah, for this wine, we're traveling back to Apalta. Remember I said uh, they're, they're, remember I said that there was a high rent district? They are neighbors of Vigna Neyen, uh, the makers of Primus. It's natural to compare this wine with Purple Angel, though. While all Montez wines feature their iconic angel, these two wines are more directly related. Obviously, Purple Angel and then the wings of the angel. Both feature Carmenere as the main grape. Purple Angel is blended with Petit Verdot, while Wings is blended with Car Cabernet Franc. So both are using Bordeaux varieties. With Wings, we have two varieties that have high levels of pyrazine. Speaking of pyrazine, the text sheet for Wings mentions how they manage the pyrazines. Quote, the leaves closest to the bunches are severely cut back at the beginning of January in order to leave the bunches completely exposed, allowing them to ripen evenly and, more importantly, reduce the level of pyrazines often found in this grape variety. End quote. They are specifically talking about Carmenere here, but I'd say that they did the same with the Cabernet Franc. So we may not get ripping high bell pepper. Here's where I probably should comment about how pyrazinic the rest of the wines in this series were, since I wrote all six scripts about the same time. I'll just have to wing this part. All right, so um, I definitely talked about pyrazines for all the other five wines, the other five wines, we definitely had a range of pyrazinic qualities. Some of them were very obvious. Some of them were almost non-existent or would kind of pop up occasionally like a whack-a-mole here and there. So I don't know what this wine is going to be like. I hope it has some pyrazinic quality to it, but I think what they're trying to do is they don't want something that's just like bell pepper. Um, so we'll see. 
I haven't had Purple Angel in a while. I really enjoy it, or I remember enjoying it, but I feel like it does show pyrazine, but I haven't had it in a few years. So again, if you want to send me some, maybe great. Um, so we'll see what it's like. Okay, so something else to compare Angel with Wings. Wing, Wings, this one, is a single vineyard wine. All the grapes are from the vineyards around the winery. Angel does get grapes from here, but also uh, a vineyard, another vineyard in, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher this name too, Marchige, about 25 miles to the northwest. The Apalta site should get less sunlight and be cooler overall than the Marchige site. So Wings may be a great way to experience a cooler climate Carmenere. Even so, both sites are in the Entre Corrieres zone with Marchige closer to the Pacific. But that site is in a much larger valley and probably is never in shadow. The Apalta site is also about 600 feet higher in elevation. If I had the spare scratch, I'd go out and buy some Purple Angel and do a side by side, but that's not happening, not at close to 200 bucks a bottle. I'm excited to see what this wine delivers. While we may not truly be able to call it Purple Angel's little brother, that's actually kind of how I'm considering it. All right, let's get the stats for this wine. The 2020 Vigna Montes Wings Carmenere, suggested retail price $55. It's the Apalta Dio, 85% Carmenere, 15% Cabernet Franc. Harvest, manual in 10 kilogram bins. Selection, manual. Yield, 3.5 to 4 tons per hectare. That's 1.4 to 1.6 tons per acre. Again, for you yield nerds. Soil, granite with clay. Elevation, approximately 800 feet. Total maceration, 12 to 22 days. Aging, 16 months, 80% new French oak, 20% second and third use French oak barrels. Bottle aging, nine months, aging potential, 15 years. ABV, 14.5%, TA, 3.72 grams per liter, pH, 3.5, RS, 3.17 grams per liter, the VA, or volatile acidity, 0.72 grams per liter, the free SO2 or sulfites, 24 milligrams per liter or parts per million or PPM. A couple notes. First, the yield, super small at around 1.5 tons per acre. That should yield super concentrated fruit. The tech sheet, including VA and free SO2, good on them. Not that the average consumer will understand what is a good VA number, but it's just cool to have it. Also, not that I know what a good VA number necessarily is. Uh, the free SO2 is a very reasonable 22 parts per million. Let's get into the wine. <clears throat> so, yes, very excited to give this a shot. And, uh, yeah, free SO2 of 24 is not a lot. Now, you have total SO2, free, SO, free SO2, um, and the total SO2 and the free SO2 in a bottle can vary over time because <clears throat> the SO2 will, will combine and will, will combine and then break apart, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's minimal. I mean, I would call this minimal sulfites added. So, and yeah, I don't really know what a good VA number is. I mean, I would imagine under one because you don't want, you don't want it to smell like vinegar. So, oh, I just perfect. It just popped on the last, on the last of wine. All right. All right. So we had, we had a lot of maceration, like 12 to 20, 12 to 22 days. So what I mean by total maceration, they had like the, 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 the grapes sat on the skins, the skins, the, the, it, the juice sat on the skins for a total of 22 days. But there was different things going on uh, in that process. Some of it was fermentation, some of it wasn't. Okay? So, it's opaque. All right? A deep, deep red, ruby, almost purple color. All the way consistent throughout. Good staining on the glass, too. Definitely, definitely got some staining. It's, it's definitely the darkest and... Uh, of the group and the one that stains the glass the most. This one smells expensive, okay? I mean, 55 bucks is not cheap by any means, but it smell you can smell the oak, okay? That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it, it, it smells very polished. Not furniture polished, just polished. So you've got cinnamon, clove, vanilla. I mean, it, it's, it's definitely an oaked wine. 
raspberry, cranberry, a little bit of earthiness, a little forest floor. There's a, there's a spicy component to it, but it's also, I can really, I can really smell the alcohol, you know, that 14.5, right? 14.5, the text used to 14.5, what does the back label say? 14.5. So now in the nose, what I, what I call this Carmenere? No, would not call it Carmenere, nor would I call it Cabernet Franc, right? So I know those are the two grapes in here. Um, I would, I would call it Cabernet, like Cabernet family for sure. I would think that you handed me a Cabernet Sauvignon, but I wouldn't know exactly from where quite yet. It smells really good. All right, let's, uh, let's taste it. So it tastes really good. I'll just get that out of the way. It tastes expensive. Like 55 bucks for this feels like a bargain. Um, the alcohol is noticeable. I would not call this Carmenere per se. I say it's probably Cabernet Sauvignon with maybe some Cabernet Franc in it. There is a bit of garage and a bit of green to it. Fern, leafy type of stuff. Um, sage, uh, there's a real black. So the only thing that would, would take me away from that's actually Car Cabernet Sauvignon is that it's not a preponderance of black fruit. I don't get the black fruit I would, I would get from Cabernet Sauvignon. It's still red fruited, but Cabernet Franc also can be very red fruited. Wow. I smell, I smell the winery, I smell the oak itself, the oak barrels. So this is obviously heads and shoulders above really the rest of everything else. This is taking a grape that you normally are used to having a lot of, a lot of rusticity or a decent amount of rusticity and bell pepper, jalapeno, or cumin. And you did a makeover on it. You were like, you got a lot of potential, you got a lot of potential here. Let's, let's kind of, let's kind of make you more sophisticated, I guess. Um, it tastes really good. So. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's red fruited. There's a greenness to it. Um, since I don't drink a lot of Carmenere at this level, I don't know if I would normally identify it as Carmenere, but if I was really, really like really trying to pay attention without anyone telling me anything, I would, I would probably think it's in that Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Carmenere, grouping, maybe throw some Merlot in there, but I knew this was excellent winemaking going on here with excellent grapes. Um, and even though Apalta should be a cooler climate area, it got to 14, 5%. So it ripened. It was just probably a longer ripening, a longer, you know, it, uh, longer growing season for them. It got ripe for sure. A little bit of caramel in there. Last wine of the day. Though I did drink that, that one of those other ones. Um, it's really good. I think for me, it's something where, since I don't drink a lot of Carmenere at this level, I don't know that I would call it Carmenere, but I get a spiciness to it. I get almost like, I almost get some, some enchilada thing going on, some cumin. I think that's what I'm looking for it, but I could see this like, like in a hot, like I could see this at, at a Mexican restaurant that, you know, is going to charge you like 25 bucks for like enchiladas, like some mole enchiladas. How about that? Cause there's a little, there's a little chocolate going on here, but not the, the mole would give you the chocolate. This would be kind of like add, adding to that. And I don't, I don't really care for mole very much. It's gotta be done really well. It can't be just like chocolate. Well, I love chocolate, but it can't be just like chocolate enchiladas. You know, I'm like, no, I just, you know, I need like that cocoa stuff. So I can see this pairing with that, like a $25 enchilada dish and this bottle going for like a hundred, 120 bucks on a restaurant wine list. And also being a little bit cooler, you know, being actually at proper serving temperature. Um, yeah, I mean, th this, this is really good. And I can see that or some type of Spanish, uh, dish or anything that's going to highlight, um, 
uh, some spices, whether it's peppers, uh, cumin, that type of stuff. I could see this being part of that. I also could see having this with a steak, like just salt and pepper and that's it. Or having a black peppercorn sauce with it, right? Yeah, this is, this is really good. Kate and Jane, thank you for all the wines. I know it took me like nine months to, to review them, but um, I really appreciate all the wines you give me uh, to do reviews and that you just kind of let me do my thing. Um, and that, that, let, me, let me just say that they really do. They let, me, they let me do my thing. There is no, none of the wines, whether it's just from, from Creative Palette, who, who sent me all six of these wines, or any other PR firm, they never, ever dictate to me how to do the review, what to say. Um, I get text sheets and I'll get backgrounds of things, uh, sometimes more background than others. Um, but yeah, I have total freedom to, to review the wines however I like. Um, with that said, I do try to be professional about it and not be a complete jerk. Um, if I don't like a wine and just be like, it sucks or you know, worst wine ever and like that, I just try to find the positive in, in it. Yeah, it's, it's delicious wine. Let me tell you this. All, I know I didn't really say anything about the other five wines. If you can find it, you should buy them. If you find those wines in, in the market, and, and you might be able to find them. Let's, let's get them. Let's get, the, let's, get the, let's get them all out. No, no particular order. I'm just grabbing them. Not in any type of cost order or order how I did them. If you find any of these wines, which the Primus is going to be probably one of the easiest one to find, and then the Wings might be, you may find it in some specialty shops, but you might find this more on a restaurant wine list. Um, the rest of them you may or may not find. If you find any of these wines out there, absolutely get them. Um, especially at the retail prices, because they're, they're all excellent values for the price that they're at. Um, Desmontes is definitely the star of the show as far as the overall uh, experience. But each of these wines, for what they are, are something that I would absolutely enjoy. And... Um, easily gladly spend the 13 12 whatever this was is uh to 55 dollars for it so that's going to do it for this episode and for this series um if you enjoy what i'm doing here please uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe tell your friends about it and we'll see you next time with a different set of wines cheers